Chris, what is our third main topic today? This is from Ed Kramer. Hey, John and crew, Oscar season is here. Woo! <laughs> Let's forget last year's show happened and look forward to a good show this year. The nominees get announced Tuesday morning, so how about a Campia classroom session to go through your predictions for the nominations for the big awards? Picture, director, actor, actress, supporting actor, supporting actress. Thanks. All right, thanks all for sending that in. And yep, tomorrow, Oscar, I guess you guys know the Oscars are my second favorite day of the year. Christmas number one, Oscars number two, my anniversary number three, God, I can't say that loudly. Uh, my birthday, number four. It's but a good the Oscars, thing we're not recording this. Yes, it's, it's, this yeah. No one will ever see this <laughs> and will never see this. Um, but the Oscars are my second favorite day of the year. I love it so much. Oscar nominations come out tomorrow morning. So I know a lot of you guys are probably in pools and things like that. So I am here. I'm your Johnny the Greek. I am here to give you your ironclad lock guarantees. Guarantee. As to what the nominees are going to be announced tomorrow. Now, of course, there's five nominees in every category, except for Best Picture. That gets 10. So here they are. And then I'm going to throw it over to you guys in a bit here to get your uh, feelings on this. Let's jump on over to the Campia classroom here, shall we? And let's start going through here your ironclad, locked-in-stone guarantees. We're going to start off here with Best Picture. Here's who I believe are going to be your Best Picture nominees. Belfast. Love this movie. Kenneth Branagh, man. Mm. Licorice Pizza Sh should note. I don't think it should be nominated for Best Picture. It's good. It's good. But I, I wouldn't personally, but I do believe it is going to get a nomination. Dune. Yeah. I'm going to say something a little bit unpopular. I believe Spider-Man No Way Home is going to get a Best Picture nomination. What, 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 what? Yeah, I, I believe Spider-Man No Way Home is going to get a Best Picture nomination. There are 10 spots. It'll probably be the final spot that it gets. <laughs> but... In recent years, we have seen Logan be nominated for Best Screenplay. We have seen Joker nominated for Best Picture. We have seen Black Panther nominated for Best Picture. We have seen the Academy Awards start to, to move a little bit more in that direction. And that, I think, has a lot to do with the influx of a lot of new members, a, not, a lot of new voting members, younger voting members, a wider diversity base. And with the fact that Spider-Man seems to have saved the movie, the movie-going industry... I actually think it's going to get that 10th spot, but let's continue here. So Spider-Man No Way Home, West Side Story, the movie that should win Best Picture this year, in my opinion. Don't Look Up, again, not one that I would nominate, but I'm looking at it. Look, when you look at all the other organizations, it's there on every one. It's going to get a nomination. The Power of the Dog, again, not one I would nominate, but it's there. One that I absolutely would nominate is Coda. So good. That's getting on there. Tick, Tick, Boom. Yep. Sorry, yep. Ray. Yeah. Sorry, Ray. What was the name of that movie? Tick, Tick. Boom. <laughs> That's right. Tick, tick, boom. It's going to be on there. And rounding it out, I, I, I no brainer, King Richard's going to get nominated for Best Picture. So I got Belfast, Licorice Pizza, Dune, Spider Man No Way Home, West Side Story, Don't Look Up, Power of the Dog, Coda, Tick, Tick, Boom, and King Richard. Uh, your guys' thoughts? Am I? Is there an, anyone on there that you don't think will get nominated? Am I missing something that you think could get a nomination? What do you think? I don't know about Don't Look Up. See, that's I wouldn't I wouldn't put it on there, but I, it's getting nominated yeah, for see, everything. Yeah, see, I look. I'm a huge Adam McKay fan, and I'm obsessed with a Big Short. I go down Big Short rabbit holes every couple months. I did over the weekend. I don't know why. I I rented it. I own it on Blu-ray. I just didn't want to be troubled to go get my disc, so I rented it and watched it twice. Don't I? I can't explain it. Uh, but I love that film. But I wouldn't put Don't Look Up on that list. I could be wrong. All right, well, we'll find out. I loved it. I think it's so timely and indicative of what's happening right now. I, I would like to see Macbeth on there. Yeah, that, I, me too. I, listen, that, that's one I wanted to put on there because I would nominate it for mm -hmm. Best Picture. It's going to get a lot of other nominations, which you'll see here. It very well could be on there. That could be one it's of the It's a stunning ones. achievement. It oh, really is. Oh, God, it's so good. Anyway, all right. Let's now look over at who's going to get nominated for Best Director, shall we? We're looking at this. For Best Director, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. Lin-Manuel Miranda for Tick, Tick, Boom. Denis Villeneuve for Dune. Steven Spielberg, West Side Story. Kenneth Branagh for Belfast. I think the winner's probably going to be Kenneth Branagh, but we're not picking winners right now. We'll wait till a bit later. We'll see. Um, Lin-Manuel, though, when you're nominated for Best Picture and you're not, you have an actor nominated for Best Lead Actor, the director's number one job is to bring the best perfor performance out of their actors. I think you got to get an Academy Award nomination. I think Lin-Manuel Miranda will get that. I think Paul Thomas Anderson is a no-brainer. I think Denis Villeneuve, I think 
people that like, he got a DAG nomination, DGA nomination. People are going to get Steven Spielberg. I think made the movie of the year and Kenneth Branagh for Belfast. Any one that I'm missing or any one that I have on there that you don't think will be in there? That's a really solid list. The the chat saying Jane Campion. Oh, oh for, yeah, yeah. Or um, Power, Power of the, the dog. dog. Power of the Dog. Uh, that's one. That, and also uh, the director of uh, Coda. Um, I'm forgetting oh, the director of Coda. That's up. another one. See, this is the thing. It gets tight because now we're at the best picture, 10 nominees. Best director, only five. Sean Heater. Or Coda. Mm -hmm. So that's the, those are a couple of your others that could be. Well, in I there think as Jane well. Campion's going to get a nomination, though. But who who gets bumped off the list between Paul Thomas Anderson, Lin Manuel Miranda, Denis Villeneuve, Steven Spielberg, and Kenneth Branagh for Belfast? Who I, gets knocked off? I think Paul Thomas Anderson would get knocked off. Really? Because Licorice Pizza, it's liked, but it's not. It's kind of a trifle compared to something like Power of the Dog. Yeah, but I think a lot of the these awards people are liking it, though. I know. And going back to John's point, too, Alana Haim is probably going to be nominated. Yeah. For Best Actress. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's that. So, all right. But there we go, guys. There are my locks for Best Director. All right. Let's now move on to Best Actress, shall we? Under Best Actress, Rachel Zegler for West Side Story. Nicole Kidman for being the Ricardos. She's amazing in that. Olivia Coleman, who, by the way, Olivia Coleman is very quietly starting to get herself into the GOAT conversation a little bit with the amount of wins and nominations she's getting. Anyway, Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter, Lady Gaga for House of Gucci, and Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Now, there's a lot of uh, talk for maybe respect um, in there. But I think you look at Rachel, what she did in West Side Story is unbelievable. Nicole Kidman, honestly, to me, might be the best performance she's ever given. I, I really liked her that much in it. Olivia Coleman, Lady Gaga, Jessica Chastain. So obviously, Chris, I know you wouldn't have Lady Gaga in there I for wouldn't. House of Gucci. <laughs> Who would you put in that that list that maybe I might be missing out on? Alana Haim, I think, would be really, really great on that. Haim, excuse me. Um, she's great in Licorice Pizza. I think Kristen Stewart might get a nomination. I am not a fan of Spencer. But I wouldn't her be surprised at all. Great. Yeah. Um, that movie did not do it for me. It's the same director as Jackie, so it's that same kind I didn't of vibe. Think it's, great either. it's not my favorite kind of movie. It feels like watching a three hour French perfume ad. Um, <laughs> you say that like it's a bad Nothing thing. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I was going to say, what's wrong with it's, that? Well, it's, it takes place over like the three days leading up to Boxing Day, and you feel like you're there. You're like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, but I would maybe swap those out. Also, I think um, that young lady who's in Coda, I think, is just so brilliant. She's also yeah. unlocking key on Netflix. I can't think of her name right now, but I would love to see her nominated. I've been so surprised to not see her in more things uh, or more awards shows because, gosh, she crushes it. She's so good. Uh, Rob, what about you? What about Kirsten Dunst in Power of the Dog? <gasps> Shoot, that, yeah. That's, yeah, mm. that's that's another one that's getting a lot of talk. Again, it's it's one of these things where it's like there's only five nominee spots, so she very well could be in there too. So there's that. So once again, guys, the ones I'm putting forward, though, are, are Rachel, Nicole, Olivia, Lady Gaga, and Jessica Chastain. Okay, let's now move over to the guy's side on this for Best Actor. And your nominees will be, maybe if I bring it up properly, <laughs> your nominees will be, Will Smith, King Richard. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that doesn't think he's getting a nomination for this. Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth. I don't think there's any chance he's not nominated for this. Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog. No chance he doesn't get it. Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom. And Javier Bardem for Being the Ricardos. I think not his best performance of his life. That was in No Country for Old Men. Mm -hmm. But honestly, other than No Country for Old Men, I think Javier Bardem as... Uh, Ricky Ricardo is the best he's ever done other than No Country for Old Men. So, but that is the one, if there's any one of these nominees that could be vulnerable to another nomination, it might be the Javier Bardem one, but that's why I'm going with. Rob, what do you think? Uh, I think that's a solid list. I wanted to throw someone into the actress category. Oh, okay. Uh, Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers. Oh, yeah, that is something She's that wonderful. Uh, Almodovar, that movie I could see winning best foreign but film. He didn't, she didn't get a SAG nomination, though, did she? Uh, I don't think she I did. It's going to be so. difficult. But it's her be... performance, though, is. But let's stick to the actor one for right now. No, I think that's a solid list. I mean, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head that you missed. What about you, Chris? Is there anybody you would swap out of there? I love this list. I mean, Benedict Cumberbatch has had such a great year, too, because he also had The Electric Life of Louis Wayne, yep. which is such a beautiful film. Highly recommend y'all watch that on Amazon. And he played that wizard. Um. And he played that wizard? Which wizard? Doctor Strange. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, 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 I
Well, Tony Stark I, called him a wizard. That's, that's true. true. I immediately went Lord of the Rings. I was like, what? No, he's smog. Um, but I, I think that Denzel or Andrew's going to take it. I it here's the thing. I am very very torn about who actually wins. I don't know. Denzel is practically a lock. I honestly think Will Smith may actually be a lock. Yeah. Mm. Andrew Garfield, you can make a strong argument he could win this thing. Uh, Benedict, could be, he's been nominated before. I, I mean. I, I, I I'm not going to put any money on this category whatsoever as no. we get into the thing. This is actually a great Oscar race, whoever's oh, in it. Oh, it's awesome. It's oh, a absolutely. really good race this it's year. It's awesome. Hey, guys, we want to take just a second and thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Now, listen, guys, you know it is not the 1970s anymore. It is not cool for a man just to let his balls look like the deepest, darkest jungles anymore. You want to keep them trimmed. You want to keep them tidy. And there's nothing I entrust more to the well-being of Dr. Jack Hammer and the amazing fantastical than the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. This thing trims like a finely tuned machine for my finely tuned area. But wait, there's more. Because today I'm excited to let you guys know about Manscaped launching their new ultra premium collection. Believe it or not, it's not for your not so private parts. I am talking about a level up overall hygiene routine with your favorite manly sense. Now in the special ultra premium collection, we're talking about premium Manscaped deodorant. Don't just take care of your balls. Got to take care of the armpits too, guys. A hydrating body spray. Listen, you got tattoos or issues with any dry skin? Well, this spray on lotion is designed to keep your skin feeling moisturized, smooth, and dudes smelling fresh. And you guys have heard me talk about the body wash. This body wash was a revelation to me. I use it every freaking day. They've also got a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, plus a free gift, a three-pack set of lip balm for guys who are taking care of their lips. So here's what you need to do. Get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Campia, C-A-M-P-E-A at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code Campia at manscaped.com. The power of attraction is now in a bottle. Thanks to our friends at Manscaped. All right, let's now move into some of the supporting categories, shall we? And we're going to start off with best supporting actress. And our best supporting actress, your guaranteed locks to be announced tomorrow morning for best supporting <laughs> actress are... Uh, Catri I always mispronounce her name. Uh, Catriona Balfi from Belfast. Uh, Ariana DeBoyce, who's so good in West Side Story. So good. Uh, She's going to win. Come, bum, She's bum, bum, gonna bum. win that category. Well, then you got Kristen Dunst in Power of the Dog. She's been that categorized as Best Supporting Actress this year. Oh. Rita Moreno for West Side Story. And Kate Blanchett for Nightmare Alley. And by the way, there, uh, you know who's... I, I could not believe I didn't have room to put her on this list. But um, uh, Marley, Oscar winner from uh, Children Marley of Lesser God, Matlin, mm -hmm. for Children, for, won an Coda. Academy Award Coda. in 1987 for Children of Lesser yeah. God. And now she's kind of like in everything that has deaf characters, but she's so good. So good. And she plays the mom in Coda. I, but I just, I really do think, and saying, John, do you really think West Side's going to get two Best Supporting Actress nominations? Listen, Rita Moreno is kind of Hollywood royalty. I think people love seeing her in West Side. I think people in the Academy love seeing her in West Side Story. So, yeah, I am sticking with this. I, this is my my list. What about you guys? Anything, any names in here that you don't think should be on the list or others you might replace with? I would boot out Kate Blanchett just because I don't think Nightmare Alley is a particularly strong film personally. Um, I think everyone tries their best in that film. Um, everyone I would, tries their best. I, I would put, it, put in Marley. Um, gosh, who else? Because she's great. She does such a good job. And she really championed Coda. She really made sure that it was deaf actors being used. Um, there, there's a couple of other names. Um, um, who was I going to say? Oh, the one of the girls from King Richard. I know there was some buzz about one of the girls mm -hmm. from King Richard yeah. was going to be possibly one of them. Um, but yeah, I. but I again, I feel pretty good about this. I think this is your luck, guys. All right. Let's move over now and look at Best Supporting Actor. And this is another tight one, to be honest with you. Best Supporting Actor, I believe your nominees are going to be Ben Affleck for The Tender Bar, uh, Cody Smith McPhee for Power of the Dog, Zerian Hines for Belfast, J.K. Simmons for Being the Ricardos. Oh my God, he is so good in so that. So good. And Bradley Cooper for Licorice Pizza. There are some other names. Mark Rylance for Don't Look Up is getting a lot of people talking about him as a mm. possibility. 
Jared Leto from House of Gucci has gotten some other ma major nominations already in consideration. Again, he can be nominated for the Razzie and for the Academy Award. I don't think he'll get it, though, even though it's possible. I'm going to go for Ben Affleck, Cody Smith, uh, Kieran Hines, J.K. Simmons, Bradley Cooper. Anybody you guys would replace on that list with? No? No, I think it's a pretty solid list, too. I'm have to, I mean... I'm going to sound like a broken record because Coda, Troy uh, Kotzer, that, the, who plays the father. Yep. I, he's amazing in that. I sobbed during his last scene in that film. And it's just, it's just sweet. And I love... Oscar season a lot of times is a lot of hard to watch, right? Where yes. it's just people going yes. through the most atrocious things ever. And isn't it wonderful when you watch a film that is very slice of life, especially when it's a slice of life that you are not privy to. And it's just heartwarming and beautiful. And it's just about people loving each other. Like, I just want that to win. I know that's cheesy, but all right, this performance is so good. Let's move on now to best adapted screenplay. Best Adapted Screenplay. And again, this is going to be tight, but I believe your nominees are going to be Power of the Dog, Dune, West Side Story, Coda, and Drive My Car. I think that's going to be your best. That's gotten a lot of attention recently. I mean, there could be some other ones too. I Like I said, I think West Side Story is going to get The Lost Daughter is getting some attention. Nightmare Alley is getting some attention. But I believe these are going to be your five. Now let's move on to Best Original Screenplay, one of my favorite categories at the Oscars. Best Original Screenplay, I believe, is going to be King Richard, Belfast, Being the Ricardos, Licorice Pizza, and while I would not do it myself, I do believe Don't Look Up is going to get nominated for Best Original Screenplay. Be. I, I also think Tick, Tick, Boom could get a nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. Ooh, it's, you know, it's funny because I do believe West Side Story is going to get a nomination but it's difficult for musicals to get screenplay nominations. It, it's happened, but I feel like it's a little bit more challenging. But yeah, it could. But, but Tick, Tick, Boom is very different than the the actual. Wait, is it based play. on a book? It's based it's on a, a show, so a it would be yeah, adapted. a rock yeah, monologue yeah. kind of a thing. But but the but the the movie Tick, Tick, Boom is a lot more than just that. It goes way be it, so it's it does a really great job of. Oh. Let's keep our eyes on that. That could possibly happen. All right. Just a couple more. We're going to come. We're not going to do every Oscar category. We're just going to do two more here. One that's very near and dear to my heart because I used to work in this industry. Visual effects. This is a tight one. This is a tight one. But I believe your visual effect nominees will be. Oh, sorry. I, that's next. Cinematography. Cinematography. <laughs> that's cinematography. Dune. Power of the Dog. Belfast. West Side Story and uh, Tragedy of Macbeth. I believe these are your best cinematography things. I I, I mean, if there's any that I feel most certain about what the five nominees are going to be, I mean, they're all a lock. Take it to the bank, guys. Every single one I'm giving you is gold. But if I felt most, if I felt 101% about something, I believe it's uh, cinematography. Any, uh, no, any others you guys think of? Great picks. All right. So the last one we're going to talk about now is, of course, the one that's very near and dear to my heart, it's visual effects. And our nominees tomorrow that are going to be announced will be, <laughs> let's see if I can get it here. Moonfall. All right. <laughs> Moonfall. <laughs> All five nomination spots. Moonfall, Act 1, Moonfall, Act 2, Moonfall, Act 3, Moonfall, Credit Scene. Moon Take it to the bank, baby. Take it to the bank. Wow. Nominees are going to be Dune, Spider-Man No Way Home, Shang-Chi, Godzilla versus Kong and Free Guy. I believe these are going to be now. There's a couple here that we're not including. Eternals. I'm not putting on there. The Eternals are good visual effects, but not not groundbreaking visual effects. There's only one visual effects category this year. Uh, it's Dune. Yeah. It's Dune. It's Dune. all the way. It's Dune. It's got to be on it. By the way, another one I, I struggled with Eternals maybe being on it. The other one I struggled keeping off the list mm -hmm. was as much as I didn't like the movie. Matrix Resurrections. Mm -hmm. Matrix, once again, has some really good visual effects in it, but I just think, especially looking at Free Guy, that was, it's such a style. It's so stylized, yeah. the visual effects in that, that it became completely immersive to me. Shang-Chi, I had just adored. Like, when, when the so dragons good. show up and stuff like that, I was just breathless and swept away into the whole thing. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, Dune, God Godzilla versus Kong, man, that fight on the aircraft carrier oh yeah dude so damn good but I, I i it's dude's gotta be okay let me ask you guys this if for whatever reason 
we found out Dune wasn't going to win. Okay, Moon Knight has a prophetic vision that <laughs> Dune is not going to be the winner. All right? And it had to be one of these others. Which one of the others do you think wins if not Dune? I would give it to Godzilla versus Kong, to be honest. You know what? I would too. What about you, Chris? Uh, Shang-Chi. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. What about you, Ray? I would give it to Godzilla. Yeah, I, Kong. I, yeah the, look, <laughs> that movie had its issues, but it it pretty damn well looked great. Yeah. It, it, and that fight scene, I mean, the, all the different, from the, the, the water effects of the ocean to the creature effects to the... And, and physical the miniature what other it's it's pretty astonishing and, and when when they do a close-up of godzilla's face and you see the detail in it i i was awed by that yeah i thought it was really great i mean it just looked good from the, the hair movement all that kind of and, stuff and in terms of verisimilitude dune is one of the most astonishing achievements i've ever seen there's not a misstep in that whole yeah. It looks real. Like yeah. everything you see, it's incredible. And like the, emo oh, I have to go back to Godzilla versus Kong, the emotions from a monster on the yeah. face of a monster. It's crazy. That's really hard to pull off. And you could tell exactly how they're, they were feeling every time. One of the most ridiculous, yet one of my favorite moments of the movie is when Kong gets his own Mjolnir. <laughs> when Kong pits up his Mjolnir, I'm like, this is so stupid, but man, I'm eating this up. This is so great. Anyway, guys, now, some people are also, I didn't include animated. Uh, I, I mean, because honestly, I didn't think this was the greatest year for animation. There's a couple really good films, but not a really strong year, uh, I think. But we're looking at. Uh, Who would be your pick, Luca. though, for animated? Luca would be nominated. Bell possibly will be nominated. Luca will be nominated. Bell will be nominated. Um, Encanto will be nominated. Will be nominated. Mitchell's versus the Machines so good. should it get should nominated. nominated. That movie's fantastic. Um, Ryan the Last Dragon is one that could get. But I mean, there's there hasn't been an animated film this year. Like I was really pleasantly surprised by Mitchell's versus the Machines. Like I thought that was going to be garbage. What's that playing on? I actually want to see that. Netflix. It's Netflix. Oh, okay. And it's I mean, Anne and I watched it one night because we had nothing else to watch. Ah, eh, let's watch Mitchell versus the Machines. Just smiles on our faces the whole movie through. You know, I'm right now the success one says Encanto. It's Mitchell's versus the machines. Now I don't granted, know, man, I think Bell's got I a shot. I haven't seen Bell yet. And I haven't I, seen I was about it. to say that. I haven't seen Bell yet. But mm -hmm. okay, so I may have to change my mind once I see Bell. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I actually think it's Mitchell's versus the machines. That movie is so, so smart. Stylistically, it's so cool to look at. It's just a beautiful film. It's smart, it's fun. I yeah. should take it. Anyway, guys, question is for you. There's really, we don't need to know what you think. Because I just <laughs> gave you the ironclad lock guarantee <laughs> nomination. No, honestly, guys, what do you guys think about this? Which one of the ones really stands out to you that you think I omitted somebody that should have been on the nomination list or left out? Whatever you guys are thinking about, we'll find out tomorrow morning. Because they'll be announcing at like, what, five in the morning? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. They announced we were taking. So we'll be talking about the nominations on tomorrow's John Campus show. We will come back to see how close I got to my ironclad lock guarantee <laughs> nominations. Whatever you guys are thinking, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.